Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to today's ACL Deep Dive. I am Dr. Mika Riley here doing the ACL Deep Dive live in Seattle, Washington at Movement Rehab and Performance. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am a doctor of physical therapy, a strength and conditioning coach, an ACL rehab specialist, and an ACLer myself. So um, thank you for joining us today. We are going to talk about why your uninjured side might hurt after ACL surgery or even before you have ACL surgery. And if those of you out there, if some of you may have just torn and are just navigating the process, um, just a little caveat, this, this community was designed specifically for you guys to empower you and educate you and really make sure that you have all the information that is evidence-based to make sure that you get the care that you need and you deserve so that way you don't have to go through this again because this is a very lengthy process and we just need to do it once or just never again. Um, so uh, if there's anything specific in, in terms of topics that you guys wanna talk about or want us to highlight a little bit more of in our community, reach out. We are absolutely happy to help you and just provide as much resource to you as possible. Um, but anyways, let's get onto our topic today of why your uninjured side might hurt. Um, if you're just injured or if you just um, had surgery, there things happen, right? You might be on crutches right now or you might have a non-weight bearing status, something like that where your knee one of your knees is not functioning the way that it normally functions or is supposed to function. Sometimes during this process, you might be a little bit hesitant to weight bear through it, or you, you can't because you have weight bearing precautions. It hurts, it's swollen, it's painful. There's fear involved. This can lead to reasons why um, you aren't loading through your leg. The other reason is like, of course, you might have non weight bearing precautions if say you had a meniscus tear involved or things like your leg might be locked straight in a brace and in conjunction with weight bearing restrictions, um, something like that. But in general, you are limited to a certain capacity. So one leg is unable to handle more than 50% of the load, maybe even more. Maybe it's not able to handle any at all right? So this is where your unaffected side comes into play. The distribution of load, because one leg is maybe out of commission entirely or 50 or less than 50 percent, then the uninjured side is going to take on that load. And so we're having more stress, more load, more work go through the uninjured side. And, you know, I'm going to say that this is normal. This is absolutely normal. Our bodies, it's nothing that you are doing. Our bodies just do this. Our bodies like to compensate. We are master compensators, um, whether we like it or not. And um, however, there, there, is, there is, you know, some intention that needs to be in your rehab in terms of movements that we are trying to perform and making sure that we limit the amount of compensations that happen. But it is something that is absolutely normal in terms of going through the ACL rehab process, whether you're pre-op or post-op. There's just a lot of variables that contribute to us naturally compensating. It's nothing that you inherently are doing it's just our body is naturally either going to take the path of least resistance or do what it does best and try to find ways to unload the affected side. So, um, for example, a lot of people, you know, I will use me as an example. I um, had surgery four months ago and I had, um, I was non weight bearing for two weeks. And during that time, I was on crutches, absolutely, but I was also in a locked brace. I couldn't move to the desired movement that I need to walk normally because I couldn't put weight through it. So my my right side was taking on a lot of load, okay? 
Um, so I was experiencing a little bit of discomfort. Um, and then, you know, once I was able to start walking, it felt a little bit better. However, once I started walking, compensation started happening. Why? Because I didn't have some things necessary that I really needed to have in order to do to uh, to not compensate. For example, I was limited in my range of motion. I was having a hard time with that. I couldn't do my follow through when I was walking well because I just simply did not have the range of motion and, and frankly, it didn't feel very good. So instead, what I would do is hike my hip and do some weird things with my body. It's something that I wasn't intentionally trying to do. It was just my body was reading what was happening and was adjusting and putting the load where where I thought it could handle. Now, unfortunately, over time, my right side started to hurt a little bit more. It wasn't so painful that it couldn't function. Like some people, it can happen, but it was starting to become a little bit more uncomfortable and I was having more discomfort in my unaffected side than in my, in my right side than my left, okay? But it's a normal part of the process. Now, the issue is, is if pain is setting in, we've got to work on that and we've got to take care of specific areas that might be hindering that ability or that might be affecting our ability to walk normally or, you know, in general, reduce compensations. This is where in your rehab, you just really have to be intentional with what you're doing, intentional with the movements that you're doing. Maybe you might have to reduce how quickly you're doing them or slow the movement down to really make sure that you are not training into compensations, okay? So in general, it is absolutely normal to feel discomfort. Why? Just because we're compensating for, and we're, and we're making up for what the affected side is not doing at that current time. Is this a forever thing? Absolutely, it should not be. It should maybe be like the first couple weeks if, if you're a non-weight bearing person or, you know, maybe a month. It just all depends on everyone's situation and the extent of their surgical operation. But for most people who, it doesn't take very long in terms of how long they're dealing with it. Now, there is just in general, I wanna talk about how we, you know, one, we normalize that this does happen and it's because of your unaffected side taking on the, the job of the affected side of your surgical side. Okay, so basically taking on full load. Now, it's important that we give you the tools on what to do about this. Okay, and this is something I talk about my, to with my clients all the time, all my ACLers. And it has to do with something we call load management. During this time, it is very, and just in the continuum of, continuum of your ACL rehab, load management is key to having a successful rehab. Basically, this refers to, in general, the volume of things that we're doing, okay, in a day, okay? Um, so, for example, oftentimes people will think, okay, well, I now am off crutches and I can start walking normally. And um, people will go from maybe walking a couple steps in their house to the ba to the bathroom, to their living room, whatever it might be. And then all of a sudden go from, oh, well, I, I could walk there. Well, now let's go to the mall and walk like 8,000 steps and get, go back to school shopping with the kiddos or something like that. Or just go walk around Green Lake if you're in Seattle, go walk around a park that's three miles long. Well, then they, it turns around and that their, their knee starts becoming achy and it's swollen and it's painful. This refers to load management. There was poor load management in that. So that's why we need to make sure that we are training for the things that we want to do. For example, when I see this quite often when people go, when, when they're dealing with an ACL rehab situation, and they go to New York City, they go to a different city where they want to go be a tourist and people who decide to go walk the city, they wake up the next day and their knee is achy. Well, why? If they're five months post-op and they're doing awesome, why are they having pain? Why are they achy? Why did they have an influx of swelling? 
Well, it's probably because they didn't train for it, right? If you work in an office and maybe only get eight to 9,000 steps in a day, but you just went and traveled to New York City or abroad and walked double to triple that amount, absolutely I would expect your knee not to feel very good about it, okay? And the reason is because you didn't train for it. And that's the important thing is that we are managing our load and our expectations and what we can do and cannot do, but also making sure that we are being intentional with our training and making sure that we are having proper load management, okay? And sometimes, especially during this time when you just had surgery and your uninjured side is taking on a lot more load, well, the thought behind it is, well, yeah, I want to keep it nice and strong. Yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely agree with that. So please load your unaffected side during this time. But you have to be intentional with this. We have to remember that your unaffected side is taking on more of the load than what it's usually taking on, right? Ideally, we have one leg taking 50% and the other leg taking the other 50%. But if one leg is not able to do that at this point in time, you might be taking on 80 to 90% or even full 100% load on it, right? So this is why when we train the uninjured side, which is very important during the rehab process, but we have to be intentional and watch our load management. If the knee is cranky and just not being very happy, it's important to still train the leg, the uninjured side, but we might not be able to just max out on our weights. We might have to reduce our, our load, our weights a little bit to make sure that we don't make it angry or angrier than it is already, okay? We have to respect that it's taking on a lot more load and by adding a lot more load sometimes is not the answer, okay? Sometimes you have to pull back a little bit until, until maybe you are able to address the injured side a little bit more in terms of is it range of motion, is it pain, is it swelling, or do you have to wait two to four weeks before you actually can start walking on it, okay? But that doesn't mean do nothing with your uninjured side. It means do something with it be intentional and have appropriate load management, okay? If you're doing leg extensions or single leg squats on your unaffected side, but at the end of the day, your knee's really, really cranky, more cranky than the surgical side, then that probably tells us it's a learning opportunity and tells us we probably did too much and we need to scale back the next time. We need to respect the fact that the injured side is going through a lot during this time and it's probably going to go through a lot until the affected side, your surgical side, is able to handle on, handle and take more load on, okay? Now, a key thing to all of this is making sure that we're not training into these compensations. We really need to find the source and the area that is maybe likely or more so causing some of the compensations that's happening. So that way we don't train into them. Okay, um, because research has shown that if we don't address these compensations, especially with people's walking, um, two years down the road, we still see some compensatory mechanisms happen, and um, that's a problem. Okay, we want to make sure that we're not training into those compensations that typically happen after ACL surgery, and, and make sure that we're doing things intentionally with proper load management. Okay, so... Hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, if not, uh, we can go into an even deeper dive of that. Um, but if you have questions regarding this, let me know. Uh, shoot us a message in the chat or message me directly. Um, but overall, having a little bit of discomfort on your uninjured side during the first couple months of ACL rehab is normal. And um, But there's something we can do about it and it just means we have to be very intentional with our rehab and making sure that we are not just overloading our uninjured side um, when we are deciding to load it, okay? Um, and, affect, and, and, and address the affected area to the best of your ability, okay? So that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions. 
Again, if you feel like you are at that point in your ACL rehab where you are about to be discharged from your physical therapy because insurance does not deem it medically necessary for you to return to sport, that's what we're here for. We are also ACL coaches that reach and work with many athletes globally. Um, and this is our passion. We really want to make sure that you get what you need. Um, if you feel like you are just generally lost in your ACL rehab and don't know what to do, we're happy to schedule a free consult with you, um, which you can do yourself on the left-hand side bar. Um, and let, let us hear your story. We want to help. We genuinely want to help and make sure that you get the care you need and advise you to the best of our ability and our knowledge. So, um, all right, stay tuned for our next ACL Deep Dive. I'm Dr. Mika Riley here at Movement Rehab and Performance.